Welcome to Church of the Chair, where every day is cuffing season. I'm your host, E, and today we're talking about adult activities. If you're new around here, you need to be warned. I'm going to be spoiling all of Stephen King's books in this series, so if you haven't read all of them, I'd click away now. You've been warned. Today, we're talking about Stephen King's most controversial book, Gerald's Game. A book that everyone said could not be filmed, and then Mike Flanagan came along and absolutely killed it. So how does Gerald's game tie into the Dark Tower and the rest of the Stephen King universe? I have some theories. Let's get into it. But first, a word from this guy. So in this one, the tie-in that I have is a really far out there tie-in, but I'm going I'm to go, go ahead. I believe that what happens during the solar eclipse in both Gerald's Game and Dolores Claiborne is what we folks around the Stephen King universe call a bean quake. What I think is happening here is during this bean quake back in 1963 when uh, Dolores and Jesse. So Jesse in this one, the lead character in this one, of course she gets handcuffed to a bed, but during that she flashes back to a time during uh, in 1963 when there was a uh, solar eclipse. Her, both her and Dolores Claiborne both experienced this eclipse, but they're both doing two completely different things and are in no way tied together in any other way, shape, or form. But what I think happens at that point is there is a beam quake which lets Dolores see into what's happening with Jesse and lets Jesse see into what's happening with um, Dolores because both of them are suffering traumatic experiences at the time. Okay, so two things about Chunk Rap Supreme's theory. I still agree with it, but also I want to bring up something that I brought up in Carrie and that I brought up in the, the Dead Zone. And that is the effects of trauma on people who live in Maine. Next thing I would like to bring attention to is that, yes, I believe that the beam quake caused a thinny that let these two characters who were otherwise not connected whatsoever see into each other's lives because of their trauma. Furthermore, the reason why I think it's a beam quake, because in this one and in Misery, Characters refer to things being off the beam. And while both Misery and Gerald's Game are quote-unquote realistic stories, I can't find any other reason for the terminology off the beam to be there. And then we have this comment from Sage Morrison 360 that brings up the fact that both Bag of Bones and Gerald's Game happen around Darkscore Lake. I missed that in the original theory video, so thanks, Sage. Next up, we have a comment from Elizabeth Morrison, 6840, who said this. Now, while I don't recall Derry being in there, I do remember the Juniper Hill reference. And yes, Norris, Norris Ridgewick from The Dark Half is in Gerald's game. Now, for this next part, those of you who have been around for a while when I was doing the original series know automatically that I did not tie in the movies, but for this one in particular, there were quite a few comments that mentioned that Gerald calls the dog that they come across uh, when they get to the cabin, he calls him Cujo. So I wanted to put this in there because yes, in the movie, even though I don't normally do the movie references, in the film adaptation of Gerald's game, Cujo is mentioned. Now, if you guys would like a series, of connections between the Stephen King adaptations uh, maybe ask for it but that's all the time I have for you today if I missed anything if you'd like to make a correction of anything I said in this video or if you have theories of your own please leave them down there in the doobly-doo but until next time I ain't one to kink shame baby but I'll hail the chair <laughs>